Yeah, my name is Brandon King, and I'm with uh, HBCU Sports, and I am uh, thrilled to be able to uh, sit down for a few moments with Mr. Mm -hmm. Brian Taylor, one of the uh, organizers behind the uh, HBCU uh, <clears throat> Brick City Classic, excuse me, <clears throat> should have drank a little bit of water, um, which is coming up uh, this Saturday to feature uh, Grambling against Hampton, and he's going to talk with us about that for a few moments. How are you doing this morning, Mr. Taylor? I'm wonderful, Brandon, and good morning, and thank you for having me. We're excited because kickoff is only a few days away uh, to bring back and bring back this rivalry of Hampton versus Grambling. Um, I'm not sure if you know, but they played many times. This will be the seventh time we played, um, and I think this is important that we bring this rivalry back here to the Northeast, and especially to Newark, New Jersey. Absolutely, absolutely. And let me start off. With this being game week, so it, is this the most stressful week or is it kind of, can you relax a little <laughs> bit? <laughs> Absolutely not. This is the most stressful week of all. Um, you know, it's exciting because it's about the details. We've been preparing for this for over two years now. Um, and I think there were a couple of stressful moments. I think number one was securing our title sponsor, uh, Prudential. I think that we were we were focused on Prudential because of their imprint in the city of Newark, also for the work that they're doing for HBCUs, as well as one of their focuses on increasing black wealth in the black community. Um, so I thought that was impactful because, you know, we're trying to do great things for our community. Number two, I think the other stressful points was actually securing the teams. You know, when you're creating a classic and this is the inaugural year, you've got to get two programs that one have name recognition two travel well. And three that want to come and say, hey, we'll come to New Jersey to play. Um, so once we secured Hampton and Grambling, we were excited because they have history. They've played together. They played previously up in the Northeast. And so they have that name recognition as well as the nostalgia of playing. Now going into game week, this is exciting because now it's all about the details. We are finalizing. We, we're doing all of our activations uh, with Prudential. We're making sure that all our tickets are continuing to be sold. We're making sure all the details the travel of the teams, getting making sure they get on the buses and the planes to come up, making sure fans are excited, making sure everything is secure for tailgate. Um, so we're doing all the details getting in. Now, the most important part will be finally Saturday at 3 p.m. at kickoff. When that whistle blows, we can sit back and say, job well done, and knowing that the inaugural year will be would have been a success and start preparing for next year as well. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And kind of coming back to that, because you touched on a a lot of things that I, I'd like to, to get yeah. into. I do want to start with the teams, you know, for so many of, of our classics, you know, be it well for a long time until this year, the Southern Heritage with uh, Jackson State and Tennessee State, you know, you've got the Bayou with, with Grambling and Southern. <clears throat> when you think of those uh, classics, you think of those two primary teams. Now mm -hmm. with, with uh, this upcoming Saturday with Grambling and Hampton, will those be the two primary uh, participants or, or do you, you have like a rotation or uh, we're looking it will more than likely be a rotation um okay. I you know because as you're going into scheduling in 2023 24 25 teams have their schedules booked out three and four years in advance um Absolutely. so we're going to probably have a rotation uh we're looking we would love to keep Hampton in rotation we'd love to keep Grambling in the rotation but also get exposure to other HBCUs I think that the beauty of like the Bayou is that it's Grambling and Southern in Louisiana every year around Thanksgiving time. What we want to do is our, our goal is to increase awareness of HBCUs in general. We're not trying to highlight one particular school. We want to increase the awareness of HBCUs in the North metropolitan area. You know, in 2023, it's amazing to me when I talk to high school students and I hear them say they didn't know about an HBCU. They don't know what an HBCU is. And so I find that uh, I'm, I, I actually take a little bit, I take a step back because our kids need to know about the history and the great history and the tremendous education that you can receive in, in, at an HBCU. I'm a Hampton alum, and I think without Hampton, I wouldn't be the man that I am today. It gave me my foundation academically. It gave me my foundation professionally. It gave me my foundation socially. I mean, I have friends that I met when I was 17 years old that we are as tight today as we were then, you know, because we've grown up together. We've become men together. Um, and, and I also have female friends. We, we've grown together. I've seen their families grow. 
And so that, that's all because of the pride and joy I have from my foundation of an HBCU. And so we want to continue to it, it give other schools the opportunity to play in the Newark metropolitan area, but also raise that awareness all around. While I my love of Hampton is strong, Howard is a tremendous institution. Grambling is a tremendous institution. Southern, Morehouse, all of these schools have great academic and athletic um, representation as well up here in the Northeast. Okay. And as well. Absolutely. So I, I, I got to ask. So <clears throat> now I, obviously with scheduling, have you have you set the field for 2024? We have. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, you have two, we have two schools that we are in deep negotiations with uh, that we want to finalize that we'll announce soon. Um, right now, I want to just focus on Hampton and Grambling and not 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 spill the tea on that one yet. But we do have two schools that we are in deep negotiations that we are ready to announce. Um, and I'll make sure that we let you know as soon as possible. <laughs> Thank you. you know I had you know I had to ask. You gotta ask. You gotta ask. I'm not mad at that. <laughs> so you you mentioned uh, that this you know this what what we're gonna see on Saturday mm -hmm. uh, is the the coming to fruition of two years of work and, and negotiations and and things of that nature. Um, who if if what was the and, and you kind of touched on it uh, mm -hmm. a little bit in terms of wanting to highlight um, HBCUs and kind of expose them uh, mm -hmm. to, to, to more uh, of the youth who, who may not know. So <clears throat> what was the kind of the starting point when, when, you, when you and your team decide, all right, we're going to put this game together? Was there a single flashpoint that decided that? And how did that, how did that process start? You know, um, it's interesting because on my team, I have two other Hampton alum, I have and a Howard alum. And the conversation started because while we were in school, there used to be the Whitney M. Young Classic, which was sponsored by the Urban League, uh, that traditionally started with Grambling started it uh, over 40 years ago. Um, then it transitioned to Hampton being the anchor school of playing in it. And I remember being in school and doing a road trip and us coming up for the Whitney M. Young Classic. And it was Hampton versus Grambling at the old Giant Stadium. And so when we were talking and being from, I'm from East Orange, New Jersey, right here outside of Newark. And being from here, it was such a staple in the community and that we wanted to bring it back because they were no longer playing the game. So the start of this was to bring back the, the HBCU Classic up here in the Northeast and reestablish the roots of HBCU football because there's a pageantry, there's a history, there's a joy in when you attend a, a black college football game. You know, you, you hear about that in big college sports, but there's the same thing in black college sports. And we wanted to bring that here. And so to start that, and our goal was simply to raise awareness of HBCUs, have local economic impact, raise funds for, to be able to give scholarships away to students. And so that's what we really wanted to do is have a direct impact on our community. And that's what started the conversation was bringing something back that was lost bringing a tradition back that some of these young kids today don't even know about, didn't even realize that was here. You hear people talk about, oh yeah, I remember that game when they used to play that, but they're not, they don't, they haven't seen it. They haven't touched it. They haven't felt it. And so that's what we really want to focus on and not just, you know, and one of our things is we don't want people, we want people to tailgate, but we want people to come into the game as well. We need you to say it, part of the experiences from the tailgate into kickoff halftime see the bands and then the fifth quarter when the bands are marching out the stadium we want everybody to experience the full effect of an hbcu football game absolutely <clears throat> excuse me absolutely and that kind of gives me uh memories from from back in the day because uh i am a a tsu graduate myself okay and when, when you brought up going to the you know the road trips when we used to play in the atlanta classic and occasionally yep. the circle city and things of that nature mm -hmm. and and going on those road trips, and like you said, though when those games kind of go away, you do hear uh, people say, "I remember when," or you say, "I wish they would." That's right. Why did they? So, <clears throat> in that sense, that's a tremendous thing that that you're looking to bring it back because mm -hmm. uh, with our institutions, the more um, exposure that that we have, I think that that's absolutely better because, like you said, in you know, in recent years, you have young people who mm. are, are completely ignorant of, of our institutions. That's right. And they don't know. And it's like they don't even understand what we're talking about. And, 
you don't realize you get a tremendous education at our schools. I Absolutely. mean, tremendous education. And then the not only just the lifelong network. And believe me when I tell you, you asked me how we started. We started this from scratch. This was a result of networking within our network of people that attended HBCUs. All of the connections from sponsors to game to television partners through media partners was all done through our network of HBCU alumni and people that understand what we're trying to accomplish and what we want to do. And for the love of HBCUs to continue to raise that awareness, continue to give them that exposure and really open it up and say, hey, look, there's a tremendous option out there. And if you look again, if you look at the times in the country there's a lot of, <laughs> of negative press around academia and, and 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 things about social equity programs and diversity and inclusion. And you want to say, while those are going away, we still have a beautiful home waiting for us to say, look, you're going to get the education. You're going to have the athletic experiences, but also you're going to have the lifetime memories that you can share with your friends and family. Absolutely. Absolutely. And with you, obviously, with you putting this together from scratch and 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 you know kind of it coming from 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 the soil in terms of, of a lot of hbcu alums mm -hmm. was it <clears throat> was there any point where that, that you had a chance to maybe kind of dialogue with people who had kind of put together other games and kind of pick their brains a little bit or was it more we're learning on the fly as we go it's a combination of both. Um we've picked the brains of other people we picked the grain we picked the, the brains of those that put on the Whitney and Young Classic. We asked what were, what were the reasons for success? What were some of the pitfalls? And what were some of the areas where you'd like to improve? We've talked to other people that like, there's a there's a um, a basketball, HBC basketball game called the Legacy Classic here in Newark uh, that's taking place. We've talked to the organizers of the Legacy Classic. And we really wanna understand what synergies can we have? What, what lessons can we learn so that we can learn from those? But then as you're going on your journey, there's going to things you're going to learn as you just go along that you you have to experience to understand so you can find out where you've fallen, but also find out how to get up and continue to move forward. I am learning something new every day, Brandon, as we get into this. I am, am, am working with our partners uh, on everything. I mean, every little detail from talent for the television broadcast to field mock-up to ensuring that the partners' logos on the field resonate the way they like it to, logo creation, um, media interview. We're doing media interviews, right? Um, everything you can ask, you think about the aspects of the game, working with the city and ensuring that we have the parking lots open at a certain time, making sure we're cleaning up for the tailgate, every little detail we're working on and the ticket sales and making sure codes on Ticketmaster work and how to continue to send out links. So we're learning as we go, but we also had to pick the brains of those of others that have uh, marched before us as they've created their own, their own branding of their potential games and things that they're doing. Out of, in, in this planning process, what has been uh, the most surprising uh, in terms of, of, just in general, I'll just ask like that because you just mentioned so many things that mm -hmm. a lot of people wouldn't even think of. Like I said, and, and just listening to you, I wouldn't have th thought codes on tickets and, <laughs> and you know field sprays and all that types of yeah. stuff. You know, um, you know because when, when we're sitting around to use a wrestling term, when the fan is thinking about fantasy booking these games, mm -hmm. you know we don't we don't think about those things. So. As you, as you and your team has, has put this together, what has been, I guess, the most surprising aspect of, of putting this game together in, in terms of something you're like, wow, I didn't, this is, you know, that kind of blew you away, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you know what has really been surprising and it's a pleasant surprise is it's two things, it, and I'm going to say it, from one is going to be how supportive the schools are and how excited the schools are to be coming up to play in this game. Um, I think that blew me away. That blew me away because you, you think of schools just thinking, okay, we're scheduling this game, but they are really, really supportive. And I'm not just talking about the athletic administration. I'm talking about the schools themselves, the presidents, the alumni associations, the athletic departments, all the way um, has blown me away. 
I think that another thing that blew me away was that when we talk to sponsors and we're negotiating with sponsors, how receptive they are and saying, yes, there's things we want to do. Yes, we want to partner with you. Yes, we want to get in. I think that that has blown me away. Um, Prudential support has been tremendous. And they, I mean, when I talk about a partner, we partner with every aspect of the organization from diversity inclusion to corporate communications to marketing. Um, everything you can imagine within the organization has been tremendous. And I think the one thing that really blew me away was fan support, because I remember in January, I was in Los Angeles and I was just there on a personal trip with some friends. And he happened to be a friend that graduated from Grambling. And so we're hanging out with some of his friends while we're out there. And mm-hmm. they said, hey, do you know Grambling's playing in Labor Day weekend against Hampton in New York? We are going. I mean, and he's just saying, you know, Brian's working on the game. I was blown away that they knew about the game. And this is prior to us formally announcing that the game was happening. Wow. <laughs> so once we <laughs> announce, you get that fan support that people really want it. So it's really just the love we're receiving across the board. Because, you know, I know what I feel for HBCU sports. But to know that others are feeling the same thing blew me away from a corporate world, the academic world, and then the fan world totally blew me away. That's tremendous, and, and it sounds like um, that you all are on, on the right path, and it looks like uh, things – it's going to be tremendous uh, – yeah. excuse me, tremendous event on Saturday. Um, we're hoping so. We're hoping so. Um, some of our events kick off um, Wednesday night. We have a, a, a skate party where we're supporting a local um, 501c3 uh, local nonprofit organization that raises scholarships as well. Their focus mm-hmm. is on doing a ride from Newark to D.C. for scholarships. Uh, We have a yard fest pep rally um, with the city, uh, with the city of Newark at Military Park Friday evening. Um, We have the parade of bands where the bands are going to meet at Riverfront Park in Newark and they're going to march into the stadium through the tailgate into the stadium. Obviously, we have the game. We're doing something special in the uh, club seats for those that purchase club seats. We're having a pregame day party uh, featuring DJ Baby Drew. Um, so he'll he'll start 90 minutes before kickoff and then one hour after kickoff. And then we got the game. We got a tremendous game. So we're trying to make it not just the game event. We're trying to make it a weekend of events, raising awareness of HBCUs and giving people what we want to focus on is a tremendous fan experience. When you come into the stadium, you have a tremendous fan experience. Um, Prudential is creating a yard, right? Everybody knows about the yard of an HBCU. So they're creating the Prudential yard right in front of the stadium for activations. That's going to open up um, at 12 o'clock and go through 7 p.m. for people to enjoy the yard and have different activations in front, right in front of the stadium, in the front of the main entrance. So we're creating a tremendous fan experience. We just want people to come out and support us um, and enjoy a great football game. And it's, it's, it sounds like you all are pulling out all the stops here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got to. And, and Brandon, again, if we establish a great footprint in year one, guess what's going to happen? People are going to say, hey, I need to go back to that. And every level of fan will have the opportunity from the tailgate into the stadium and through the experience. And I will tell you something else. I This is, we're, we're playing at Red Bull Arena, which we were intentional about. Mm-hmm. The one thing we don't want to do is go to an NFL stadium and when you look in the stands, it's 85,000 seat stadium and there's 25, 30,000 people in the building because now you see a lot of empty seats. It doesn't make for the greatest fan experience. It doesn't make for the great game experience for the players. So we've gone to a smaller arena. It's a big time. And when I tell you, as a state-of-the-art facility, the MLS team, the New York Red Bulls, played there. Matter of fact, this past Saturday, they were overwhelmed with Messi mania as Messi came in to play for the MLS game. But yeah. it's a tremendous stadium. It's a dome stadium uh, with, you know, similar to the old Cowboy Stadium with the hole in the center. So they're mm-hmm. going to have tremendous acoustics. They're going to have tremendous sound. But the players will feel like they're they're playing in a major league stadium just at a smaller scale with all the bells and whistles that an NFL stadium will bring to them. Now, <clears throat> is that, do, you, do you foresee a point where you have to move to a larger venue? I know you. I know that that what you've mentioned that 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 fan experience is is key. Um, but as as the game will will grow, that may be a question that you would would have. At to some look point, at. we may have to, um, but not in the not in the immediate future. Our focus is on Red Bull Arena, um, and our focus is to, to to continue to give that tremendous experience here. Now, if we if we get to the point where we just can't hold that capacity, and we have to move. 
then that's something we have to discuss down the line. But right now, we want to stay focused on this right side and what I call is the right side stadium for what we're trying to do, which is going to be tremendous for us. Sounds awesome, man. <laughs> you, you've, you've touched on so many things um, just that we went through that I, that I was going to ask. Um, like I said, you've got, you've got a week of events. You've got, uh, you know, some great teams that are, that are going to come in. And, and obviously both of those teams I would consider, uh, you know, blue blood HBCU programs. Absolutely. Um, and, and coming in and, and bringing this, you know, back to, to the Northeast, which, you know, <clears throat> has kind of, would you say has gotten gotten overlooked a lot because, you know, when you, you think of HBCU football, granted, you know, we you have the MEAC and the CIAA, but a lot people tend to gravitate on the, the southern end of that. Um, yeah, it's it, it definitely has in the Northeast. Um, when you think about HBCU football and black college football in the Northeast, you have the CIAA, um, you have the MEAC, but now, you know, you look at the, you know, some schools have left those conferences. Um, they moved to other conferences. So it really is a southeastern type of experience. Um, I, I I lived in Dallas for a few years and I've lived in Tampa for 12. Um, and so I, I you 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 see it and you feel it when you're down there. The community supports. I've been to games I've, on the campus of FAM. I've been to the Prairie View Grambling game in Dallas and you see the entire community because it's, it's entrenched in their community. It's the every year thing, right? And so everybody's going out. I've been to the Florida Classic, right? And and everybody in the state seems to to converge on Orlando. And so I think that without the Classic being up here, without the constant presence of um, one of our Black schools playing up here on a regular basis, you kind of get lost in the Mecca. If you look at in the Northeast, I mean, we I talk about Rutgers football and the fact that Rutgers is here, and then I compare it to Florida or Florida State or Texas or Texas A&M, mm -hmm. you have so many pro sports that circle around this, you get, it gets lost. And so you, you're not seeing the presence. You're not seeing the awareness. You're not seeing the exposure. So we're hoping to bring all that back to our community, right? And so some of our athletes can see, oh, wow, I got a great opportunity to play in a great conference. If you look at the SWAC, what Grambling is, or you look at the CAA, the Hampton now plays, and those are tremendous football conferences. So you're going to get a great level of football and still get the exposure and get TV exposure. I mean, think about this. This game is on NFL Network. The first year this game is being televised by NFL Network. They're in about 57 million homes and on all their platforms. So we have an opportunity to really raise that exposure that you would not otherwise get, right? And the other schools don't necessarily get. So we got a tremendous opportunity to do that and reestablish the brand up here in the Northeast. Yes, and I've <clears throat> and it's funny you mentioned that with it being on the the NFL Network, which is tremendous. Um, they've done some other HBCU games and they do a tremendous job. Yes, uh, of, of of showing the game. So that that is that that's a great get that you were able to to do yes. that. <clears throat> now, with you going, obviously you mentioned you mentioned you've been to some of these other games, and and obviously I'm going to assume you went and you kind of got to observe and, and kind of pull a little bit from what you saw uh, in 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 bringing in into into your game that you all are putting on mm -hmm. uh, on Saturday. Yeah. Um, what specifically, uh, or 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 in general, some of the things that you saw from some of the other classics that you attended that you the successes rather that you're able or open to be able to uh incorporate uh into your game i think um number one is a great matchup <laughs> you need to have a great matchup of two teams um that are like you said they're blue bloods in black college football <clears throat> right when we talk about hampton and grambling you've got historic uh hall of fame coaches You've got players that have played and gone on to the NFL. You also have a fan base that travels, right? That, I think that was also part of our key in, in, in looking at the matchup is that who, do they have strong fan bases in the Northeast and do their fans travel? I told you earlier about my, my trip to Los Angeles where people are like, hey, we're coming. And the Grand Fam is coming. The Hampton has a strong alumni base here in the Northeast from D.C. on up through Boston, right? And so we want to make sure that those are things that we had to do for, for a great matchup. Number two, we had to make sure people could tailgate. We wanted to make sure people know that you can tailgate <laughs> because we want to get out there early and set ourselves up. 
Um, and then we also looked at the the experience of what's the in game experience for the fans from the bands to what they experience in while they're in there. So we want to make sure that they had a top notch fan experience for game day. And so those are things that were critical to us. Sounds good. Um, <clears throat> are there? <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> now, um, are there? I know you mentioned you're, you're wrapping up with. Well, not wrapping up, but but tickets are continuously on sale. They can go to uh, Ticketmaster, or what can they go to? They can go to Ticketmaster or send them to our website, BrickCityClassic.com, and purchase your tickets. Find out all about the game. Find out about our club seats. Find out about regular seats for those. And, and we have a variety of seats that people can choose from. Uh, Ticketmaster, or uh, it's easier just to go through BrickCityClassic.com. Okay. And then I just got... One more, it's a, it's a little bit of smack talk, but you, um, I said, well, I know you you played three years at Hampton. I played I played three years of basketball at Hampton. I was on the nineteen ninety one CIAA championship team. And then y'all y'all just moved out of the Big South, am I? We did move out of the Big South. We're now in the Colonial Athletic Association. Go ahead. What, what, what you gonna say to me? What you gonna say to me? I want to hear this. And see, and, and see we uh, this yeah, Tennessee we, St Tennessee State, right? Missed y'all by a year, missed because you know the the Big South and the uh, OVC have kind of done this merger non merger situation, yeah. and I thought it was a big schedule miss because you obviously you uh, A and T and you moved out of the yeah. the conference the year before that would have been a a a, uh, a big game or or a game that at least right. our our fan base would have liked to see because. That, that would have been know. a great game. That would be a, that would be a great game. I mean, again, you've got a tremendous fan base. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Eddie George is still your coach, correct? So he mm -hmm. has a name that's been out yeah. there. Um, and you've got the history of playing, and you played extremely well over the time. So that's another and a fan base that travels, right? Yeah. It's another fan base that travels, and it it you know, and you mentioned something that's important is that as we move into this new conference, right? And it's a tremendous athletic conference, a tremendous athletic conference. But it's also uh, North Carolina A&T is joining us. So yeah. we still have a natural that we've been playing for a number of years in the MEAC. We still have a natural rivalry of another black college program, blue blood black college program that's doing great things in the conference with us. And it's, again, it's a, it's a Northeastern conference. So you have a chance to really have two major programs playing up here in the Northeast um, in that conference as well. Um, so we're looking to do great things here. Well, you know, Tennessee State, I, 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 I'm again, I am an organizer of the Prudential Brick City Classic, but I'm still a Hampton alum. If Tennessee State wants some, we, we make sure we can try to get that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, may, maybe we can maybe we look to, to make that happen. <laughs> that'll, be, that'll, like that'll be a tremendous matchup. That would be a tremendous matchup. I mean, obviously, with the scheduling, we got to let the schools and the schedule makers do their thing. Um, but as a fan, I would love to see that on the field. I absolutely love to see that on the field. I would. I, I think it, it would be a. I think it would be a great game. You know. Yes. I, I think honestly, and I've I've, I've said this for a while, and, and other more uh, more established pundits have said the same thing. When it comes to to Tennessee State, you know the 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 want is a lot of them to move to the SWAC for from a a geographical mm -hmm. standpoint. But yeah. honestly, I think stylistically, in terms mm -hmm. of how we play, and particularly how Coach George wants us to play, it's mm -hmm. more like it's more of a MEAC style. Mm -hmm. um, they they want to be very really physical. They yes. want to run the football. Yes. Uh, play tough defense. You yeah. know, we don't necessarily pitch it around the yard all the time, or at least mm -hmm. that, that's not what we want to do. I'm like, that's that sounds more like MEAC that's football. The MEAC. Yeah. That's the MEAC. Hey, what I'm hearing this uh, so far on Saturday, these coaches are saying this is going to be an exciting game. Both the Gramlin coaches and the Hampton coaches are talking about how exciting this is going to be, and they anticipate points being put on the board. So I'm looking forward to it. Like if we can get if we can get an exciting game for year one, man, can you can you imagine what that's going to do for year two, year three, year four? If people are going to say the first one really blew it out and they had such a great experience, but the experience means nothing if the play on the field doesn't match. And Absolutely. you got to have a great play on the field. And we bring you, again, you're going to have the bands. You're going to have everything imaginable out there. So it's going to be a great time. So as we wrap, let me ask this. 
-hmm. in five years, <clears throat> if you would, when in five years, the HBCU Brick City Classic will be. In five years, the HBCU, be, a, the Prudential Brick City Classic <laughs> will be the premier black college football game in the Northeast. People will be asking when, on the day the tickets go on sale, they'll be saying, I got to get my tickets. And I have to be there. It will be a destination event for black college football in the Northeast. Put that in. Prudential. Let me, let me put that in. Yes, yes. The Prudential. <laughs> the Prudential Brick City HBC <laughs> kickoff classic. Yes. You got to get that right, man. You got to get my partner right. <laughs> Make sure I don't want <laughs> Yeah, and they've been, again, like I said, they've been great partners, man. They've been really, really, really good partners to me. So um, it's been a pleasure to work with them. Um, and they're excited as well as we are.